Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about the anxiously ambivalent attachment. And these babies are called ambivalent because they both want support and consolation from their caregivers, but at the same time they reject it for some reason. And like I've said before, this attachment strategy is also born out of a fit between parent and baby because some of these babies are really, really difficult to soothe. But I have to be honest, on the parent side, what people have found is that these parents are often really inconsistent with their parenting, inconsistent about whether they're going to be there for the baby or not. And oftentimes, they're actually quite hurtful to the baby. And sometimes at the, at the extreme, they can be very abusive. Then the tricky thing is that when these babies get upset, they go to their caregiver for support, but sometimes they're hurtful, and so it makes them run away from their caregiver at the same time. And when they're hurt by their caregiver, it activates the attachment even more which makes them go back to their caregiver. And so these babies are stuck in this loop of both wanting attachment, and then when they get to it, getting scared, and so they run away. And then when they get scared, they need attachment again, so they go back to the caregiver, and they get stuck in this loop. So even when their own abilities come online, and other babies are exploring the world using their new abilities, these babies feel anxious because they're not sure that their mother's going to have their back if they need help. And I think that deep down inside, these babies are also very ambivalent about their achievement. They both want to reach out and explore the world because it, it does feel good. But on the other hand, it signifies to them a way of leaving their caregiver, and they desperately don't want to leave their caregiver. Now, unlike the avoidant baby, who thinks that they can do just fine without relationships, and in fact, maybe they can because their emotions are in control and so their emotional needs are less, these ambivalent babies have very, very high emotional needs, and they don't feel like they can go on without the support from other people. And yet they're ambivalent because when they've gone to other people for help, it's often been disappointing or sometimes downright hurtful. And so they're stuck in this vicious loop and paralysis about what they're going to do. Now the sense of self for an ambivalent baby is very shaky. Deep down inside, they're worried that they're not lovable and wanted. But at the same time, sometimes people have been there for them, so maybe they are. And maybe the best way to characterize their sense of self is that it's often dependent on what other people think of them. Now, when the ambivalent baby goes to school, there can be a mixed presentation depending on how severe the attachment issues are and whether or not the relationships have been hurtful in the past. So for instance, on the lighter side, you can see a baby who just likes to be the center of attention and is really preoccupied with what other people think instead of their schoolwork. But then on the more desperate side, you see people who who idealize other people, get into really intense, bad relationships with people that aren't good for them, or get really, really mad whenever relationships fail, or look for signs of abandonment and failure, even when there aren't any. Teachers can sometimes like these students because they keep asking for help, but at the same time it might be exhausting for them because that help is not enough, and they need help for things that they really don't need help on. And they don't, They're not good independent learners in that way. These people might do well in school, but honestly, that's not where their head's at. What they really care about is whether or not they have good friends and close relationships. And yet, it's so torturous for them because they never feel satisfied in those relationships. It's really painful to have an ambivalent attachment. Unlike the avoidant baby who can sometimes numb out and pretend like nothing's wrong, the ambivalent person always knows that there's something wrong, that there's something to be worried about, and they feel emotions really intensely. And yet, when they do, they're not sure that anyone's going to be there to comfort them. And they're also worried that other people are just going to make things worse. And so they're just stuck in feeling all this pain and feeling abandoned by other people in the middle of it. And so even though these students can be difficult to interact with because they're clingy and intense and mad at you whenever you slight them in some way, it's so important to be consistent with them and to do uh, a lot of naming and reflective awareness which is going to be stuff that we talk about in future videos. So stay tuned for how to actually help people with both avoidant and ambivalent attachments, because there is a way to get a secure attachment even later in life.